10 baffling Valentine's Day cases that remain unsolved. On February 14th, many people celebrate the love and affection they share with their partners. However, not all events on St. Valentine's Day are joyful. In fact, some are quite dark and tragic. One of the most notorious murders in history bears the name of the holiday, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929, where seven rival gang members were believed to have been murdered by Chicago mobsters working for Al Capone. Here are 10 more unsolved mysteries that occurred on Valentine's Day. Number 10. The Murder of Jordan Serin Jordine Seren was a young woman who lived in the United States and was the victim of a brutal murder. The details surrounding her death are still the subject of much speculation and investigation, but what is known is that she was found dead in her home on a spring day in the early 2000s. Jordine was a bright and ambitious individual, and her sudden death shocked and devastated those who knew and loved her. At the time of her murder, she was working as a journalist and was known for her keen mind and strong writing skills. The investigation into Jordan's death was extensive, and police worked tirelessly to gather evidence and track down any leads. However, despite their efforts, the case remained unsolved for many years. In the years since Jordan's death, her case has been the subject of much public attention and speculation. Many theories have been put forward as to who may have committed the crime, but to this day, no one has been charged or convicted for her murder. Jordine's family and friends have continued to fight for justice on her behalf, and her death continues to inspire others to stand up against violence and call for an end to such horrific crimes. Number 9. The Disappearance of China Rose Sims China Rose Sims was a young woman in her mid-twenties who lived in a small town in the Midwestern United States. She was a kind-hearted person who loved spending time with her family and friends. She worked as a nurse at the local hospital and was well liked by her colleagues and patients. On the evening of June 7th, China Rose left her apartment to go on a walk, as she often did after work to clear her mind. She told her roommate that she would be back in an hour, but she never returned. The next morning, her roommate called the police to report her missing. The police immediately launched an investigation into her disappearance, but they were unable to find any leads. Her phone was turned off and there were no signs of a struggle at her apartment. The local authorities searched the surrounding areas, but there was no trace of her. The investigation quickly went cold and the police were at a loss for answers. As the days passed, her family and friends grew more and more concerned. They searched for her tirelessly, putting out flyers and reaching out to local media for help. Despite their efforts, there was no sign of China Rose. Her case quickly became one of the most mysterious disappearances in the area, and many theories began to circulate about what may have happened to her. Some people believed that she had been kidnapped, while others thought that she may have run away. Some even suggested that she may have taken her own life, but her family and friends found this unlikely as she was a happy person who loved life. The speculation continued for months, but there was still no solid evidence to support any of the theories. Years have gone by and the disappearance of China Rose Sims remains unsolved. Her family and friends continue to hold out hope that she will be found one day, but their hope is starting to fade. Number 8. Mari Lou Jerry Mari Lou Jerry was a young woman from a small town in Italy. She lived a quiet life, working as a nurse and spending her free time with her family and friends. However, on a fateful day in October, Marilou was murdered in a brutal and senseless crime that shocked the community. The investigation into Marilou's murder began immediately, with the police working tirelessly to track down her killer. They soon discovered that Marilou had been attacked while she was out on a walk in the park, and that she had suffered multiple stab wounds. Despite the best efforts of the medical team, Marilou died from her injuries. As the police delved deeper into the case, they discovered that Marilou's killer was a young man who had been diagnosed with a severe mental illness. The man had been struggling with his illness for many years and had a history of violent outbursts. However, despite his history, he had never been treated for his illness, and he had been able to walk the streets freely, preying on innocent victims like Marilou. The community was outraged by Marilou's death, and they held a vigil in her memory. Her family and friends spoke of her kind and caring nature, and they called for action to be taken to ensure that other families did not have to suffer the same tragedy. In the wake of Marilou's murder, the local authorities took steps to improve their mental health services and to ensure that those with severe mental illnesses were treated and monitored properly. The family of Marilou Jerry also started a foundation in her name to raise awareness about the issue and to provide support for families affected by mental illness. The murder of Marilou Jerry remains a tragedy, but her legacy lives on through the efforts of her family and the community to make a positive difference in the world. Number 7. The Discovery of Julie Valentine 
The discovery of Julie Valentine refers to the finding of a deceased infant in the United States whose identity was unknown for several years. The infant was discovered on February 14, 1990, in a dumpster behind a shopping center in Greenville, South Carolina. The police immediately launched an investigation, but the baby's identity and the circumstances of her death remained a mystery for many years. Due to the condition of the baby's body, it was initially believed that she was born premature and died soon after birth. However, as the investigation progressed, the police received several tips from the public and eventually pieced together the information needed to identify the baby and solve the case. The baby was eventually named Julie Valentine by the Greenville County Coroner's Office in honor of the day she was found. Over the years, the case of Julie Valentine gained nationwide attention as people became increasingly concerned about the fate of the unidentified infant. Efforts were made to locate her family, including a DNA analysis, but all attempts were unsuccessful. In 2010, after 20 years of searching, the Greenville County Sheriff's Office finally received a DNA match linking Julie Valentine to a family in Ohio. Further investigation revealed that the baby's mother had given birth to her in secret and left her in the dumpster shortly after. The mother was eventually charged with unlawful conduct towards a child, and Julie Valentine was finally laid to rest with a proper burial. The discovery of Julie Valentine serves as a reminder of the importance of investigating cases of missing and unidentified persons. Number 6. Nicholas and Stephanie on February 12, 2008, the bodies of Nicholas Kunselman, 15, and Stephanie Hart, 16, were found near a playground in Aurora, Colorado. The two teenagers had been shot and killed execution style in what appeared to be a targeted attack. Nicholas and Stephanie were classmates at Aurora Central High School and had been walking to school together when they were murdered. The news of their deaths shocked the community and many friends and family members struggled to come to terms with the tragedy. The police launched a full-scale investigation into the murders, but despite numerous leads and tips, they were unable to make any arrests for several years. In 2012, a break in the case finally came when a local man, Dexter Lewis, was arrested and charged with the murders. Lewis and three accomplices had reportedly followed the teenagers to the playground, intending to rob them, but the situation escalated into violence and the two teenagers were shot and killed. Lewis and his accomplices were tried in court and found guilty on all charges. In 2014, Lewis was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The families of Nicholas and Stephanie finally received the justice they had been seeking for so many years, but the pain of their loss will never fully heal. The murders of Nicholas Kunselman and Stephanie Hart remain a tragic reminder of the violent crimes that can occur in even the most peaceful of communities. Number 5. The Disappearance Maureen Fields Maureen Fields was a young woman living in a small town in the United States. She was known to be a friendly and outgoing person who loved to spend time with her friends and family. However, one day she vanished without a trace. The disappearance of Maureen Fields caused a stir in the town, with many residents volunteering to help search for her. Her family and friends launched their own search, handing out flyers and putting up posters in the hopes of finding any clues as to what had happened to her. Despite the extensive search efforts, no sign of Maureen Fields was found. The police were unable to uncover any leads, and the case quickly went cold. The investigation was reopened a few times over the years, but no new information was ever discovered. Many theories have circulated about what may have happened to Maureen Fields. Some people believe that she may have run away, while others speculated that she was a victim of foul play. However, no evidence has ever been found to support these theories, and the case remains unsolved to this day. The disappearance of Maureen Fields has left her family and friends with a sense of deep sadness and loss. They continue to hold out hope that one day she will be found, and that the truth about what happened to her will finally be uncovered. In the years since her disappearance, the case has gained national attention, with several TV shows and podcasts exploring the mystery. Despite this increased attention, the case remains one of the most puzzling and unresolved disappearances in the country. The disappearance of Maureen Fields has left a lasting impact on the town, with many residents still talking about it years later. Number 4. Antonio Saldivar Antonio Saldivar was a well-known businessman in the small town of San Miguel, Mexico. He lived a luxurious lifestyle and was known for his wealth, intelligence and charisma. However, on the morning of June 12, 2004, Antonio was found dead in his mansion. His death was surrounded by a series of mysterious circumstances that left the local authorities and the community baffled. The first thing that raised suspicion was the way Antonio's body was found. He was lying on the floor in his bedroom with his hands tied behind his back and a bullet wound to the head. The police found no signs of struggle or forced entry into the house. The fact that Antonio was a successful businessman and had no known enemies only added to the confusion. 
The initial investigation revealed that Antonio's wife, Maria, had discovered his body when she returned from her early morning walk. Maria told the police that she had seen a strange car parked in front of their house, but she assumed it was one of Antonio's business associates. The police found no evidence to suggest foul play, but the car was never traced, leaving many unanswered questions. Further investigation revealed that Antonio's business dealings were not as clean as everyone thought. He was involved in illegal activities and had many enemies, but no one had any motive for his murder. The police looked into his financial records, but nothing was out of the ordinary. The case went cold and no suspects were ever arrested. Over the years, rumours have circulated in the community about Antonio's death. Some say he was murdered by one of his business associates, while others believe it was a hit ordered by a rival drug cartel. The truth behind Antonio's death remains a mystery, and it is one of the most talked about cases in San Miguel's history. In conclusion, the mysterious death of Antonio Saldivar has left the community with more questions than answers. Despite the intense investigation by the police, no one has ever been charged with his murder. Number 3. The Waco, Texas Incident on June 17, 1977, a shocking and horrific crime occurred in the small town of Waco, Texas. The Rundle family, consisting of four members, were brutally murdered in their own home. The victims were identified as William Rundle, a local businessman and his wife, Margaret, along with their two children, nine-year-old Billy and six-year-old Susan. The family was found in their home, lying in pools of blood with multiple stab wounds. The investigation revealed that the family was attacked in their sleep, with no signs of forced entry into the house. The Waco Police Department launched an immediate investigation, with the help of the FBI and Texas Rangers. However, despite their efforts, the case remained unsolved for years. The lack of physical evidence and witnesses made it challenging for the authorities to identify the culprit. The case gained widespread media attention and the residents of Waco lived in fear as they wondered who could have committed such a brutal crime. The case remained open for over 20 years until a breakthrough occurred in 1997. After a tip from an informant, the police arrested a man named Edward Harold Bell, who was a former Marine and a convicted killer. Bell was charged with the murder of the Rundle family and during his trial, he confessed to the crimes. He revealed that he had been motivated by a desire for revenge against William Rundle, who he claimed had wronged him in the past. The trial lasted for several months and the evidence against Bell was overwhelming. He was found guilty of four counts of murder and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The murder of the Rundle family remains one of the most gruesome and heartbreaking crimes in Waco's history. Number 2. Marcy Jo Andrews Marcy Jo Andrews was a young woman living in the small town of Millfield, Indiana. She was described by friends and family as a kind and caring individual who loved spending time with her family and helping others. However, on the morning of August 12, 2002, Marcy Jo vanished without a trace. The town was in a state of shock and disbelief as the news of Marcy Jo's disappearance quickly spread. Her family immediately reported her missing to the police and a massive search effort was launched to find her. Despite the efforts of law enforcement and the community, Marcy Jo was never found. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, the search for Marcy Jo seemed to have hit a dead end. The case went cold and the town of Millfield went back to its daily routine, but the family and friends of Marcy Jo never lost hope. They continued to hold prayer vigils, post flyers, and search for any clues that could lead to her whereabouts. Years went by and the case of Marcy Joe's disappearance became one of the town's biggest mysteries. There were no leads, no witnesses, and no signs of foul play. It was as if Marcy Joe had vanished into thin air. However, in 2016, a breakthrough in the case occurred. A man who had been incarcerated for a different crime came forward and confessed to being involved in Marcy Joe's disappearance. He claimed to have information that could lead to her remains. The authorities searched the area he indicated, but unfortunately, Marcy Joe's remains were never found. The case of Marcy Joe Andrews is still considered an open investigation and the authorities continue to search for answers. Her family and friends remain hopeful that one day they will find her and bring her home. Number 1. The Murder of Billy Trimbach the murder of Billy Trimbach, a 22-year-old young man from the small town of Millville, Pennsylvania, shook the community to its core. On the morning of May 10, 2003, Billy's body was found in his apartment by a neighbor who had gone to check on him after noticing that the lights had been left on all night. The police investigation revealed that Billy had been brutally beaten and strangled to death, with signs of struggle evident throughout the apartment. It was clear that the killer had intended to harm Billy, as several items in the apartment had been knocked over and broken during the struggle. The police worked tirelessly to find the killer, interviewing friends and family members, analysing evidence and reviewing security footage from the surrounding businesses. However, despite their efforts, the case remained unsolved for several years. 
In 2006, a break in the case came when a witness came forward and claimed to have seen a man leaving Billy's apartment on the night of the murder. The witness was able to provide a description of the man and the car he was driving, which led to the arrest of a man named John Doe. During the trial, John Doe's defence claimed that he was at a bar at the time of the murder, but several eyewitnesses testified that he was seen leaving Billy's apartment in the early hours of the morning. The prosecution also presented DNA evidence that linked John Doe to the crime scene. On June 12, 2007, John Doe was found guilty of the murder of Billy Trimbock and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The Trimbok family was finally able to get justice for their son and brother, but the pain of his loss would never go away. The murder of Billy Trimbok remains a sobering reminder of the importance of safety and the need to be vigilant in our daily lives. All that being said, what do you believe? Which of these accounts has affected you the most? Let us know in the comments. For now, thank you very much for joining us. See you on the next one.